Continuing our conversation on the president's first United Nations address, President Biden also touched on his administration's uh, pull out of American troops from Afghanistan, more just focusing on the situation in Afghanistan, not going too deep, knowing that it would come back on him and their ill-prepared withdrawal. Um, Join me now to talk more about what was not in the president's speech and how we go forward with addressing the situation in Afghanistan. As Congressman Mike Waltz, he's a veteran of the war in Afghanistan, as well as a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. He's from the state of Florida. Congressman, welcome back to the program. Hey, good to be with you. Uh, re really appreciate it. So, Congressman Waltz, what was your initial reaction to the president's comments uh, regarding Afghanistan before the United Nations? Well, I thought the entire speech was was pretty much as expected. Um, you know, focus on climate, focus on COVID, platitudes, frankly, to multilateralism and the UN, uh, and, um, and and then this kind of oblique. You know, basically uh, an, an ongoing defense of this disaster uh, that he has caused uh, in Afghanistan. Um, this this arbitrary number of 20 years. Um, I, I wonder if he would have uh, just put a 20 year time limit on on fighting communism uh, and and defeating the Soviet Union. Uh, if he would have put that kind of timeline or any kind of timeline on defeating fascism, but for some reason, 20 years. Uh, in Biden's mind, is is the limit for fighting Islamic extremism. The problem is they're not done fighting us. Uh, the Taliban equals Al Qaeda, uh, and they now have the power of what I'm calling a terrorist super state with an army, with an air force, uh, with a functional international airport to send people anywhere they want in the world. Uh, and I believe eventually a central bank, because I believe eventually in order to get our people out, Biden is going to unfreeze billions in foreign currency reserves. So, yeah, we didn't, of course, hear any of that. Um, and we heard more happy talk. But in the meantime, this is this has been a disaster from a humanitarian rights standpoint, from a credibility standpoint with our allies around the world and certainly from a counterterrorism standpoint. It's kind of like I was just talking with Senator Cotton about if you don't talk about it, it's like it doesn't exist. The fact that he didn't mention China is uh, really our global adversary. But I, I want to quote from him in his comments about Afghanistan. He says, the United States will do our part, but we will be more successful and more impactful if all of our nations are working toward the full mission to which we are called. And then he goes on to talk about we must all advocate for women, the rights of women and girls to use their full talents to contribute economically, politically, and socially and pursue the dreams free of violence and intimidation. You know, those words, quite frankly to me, Congressman, ring hollow given the performance of the Biden administration in Afghanistan. No, they're completely hollow. And, the, you know, I'm, I'm the co-chair uh, of a caucus focused on women's issues around the world. Uh, and I have to tell you, uh, the Biden's, Biden's record on women's issues is abysmal. Forget the happy talk and the rhetoric, uh, which they're very good at. But if you look at what is actually happening, you have Muslim Uyghur women uh, in China being sent to concentration camps with forced sterilization and forced abortion. You have upwards of 30 to 40 percent of migrant women coming across our southern border getting sexually assaulted and sold into uh, uh, slave uh, and sold into trafficking rings. And then, of course, Afghan women have already been told you can't go to work, you can't go to school. Uh, and anyone who even dares to protest the oppression uh, is beaten, uh, is beaten in the streets, if not uh, shot and killed. So if you look at what they're actually doing for women around the world, it's somewhere between uh, you know, what we used to say in the Army, jack and squat, uh, just to be yeah. very blunt. And it's, 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 it's abysmal. And, and for him to try to give that kind of rhetoric with a straight face is, I think, insulting the women and girls uh, uh, all over the world. But unfortunately, Congressman Waltz, unchallenged by the media, uh, they're not going to say anything about the president and hold him to task. Uh, for what he says compared to what he does. Well, yeah, right. That's absolutely right. And the media is complicit 
uh, with the Biden administration just wanting to change the channel on all of this. But, you know, Tony, as we speak, there are Americans still trapped. Our allies are being hunted down as we speak. People who stood side by side with with me and so many other soldiers and were willing to take a bullet for their own freedom and for our values and, and our way of life versus the Islamic extremist authoritarians. They're being hunted down. And, and the thing that has me so upset is American soldiers are going to have to go clean up this mess eventually when the homeland is threatened again by this terrorist super state. But we will have no bases. We'll have no local allies. And we're going to have to fight our own equipment that was left behind. Yeah. And that is right. infuriating. Yeah, it's going to be harder, even harder this time. Congressman Mike Waltz, always great to uh, have you on the program. Thanks so much for taking time to talk with us today. Absolutely. Talk to you soon. God bless.